we're getting a little bit of a break from the heat today in Houston, but you just know that's not going to last forever. And when it does get hot, we sweat. It's an annoying nuisance for most of us, but for some it can become a real problem, a real issue. Joining us this morning is Dr. Sherry Ingraham, a board certified dermatologist. So, Doctor, when does excessive sweating become a medical issue? Where's that line? The fine line is when our sweating basically exceeds our body's normal sweating to maintain thermoregulatory function. Okay. So there's some ways you can measure. Typically, a sweat mark under the arm should be about five centimeters. When it exceeds five centimeters when you're wearing clothes, you have excessive hyperhidrosis. Wow. So your body normally releases the sweat because it's trying to cool off. The sweat evaporates, cools you off, but sometimes is just too much and then it's not cooling you off it's just making you really exactly. look yucky uh, what about over-the-counter products I've noticed that lately um, some of the popular brands are advertising clinical strength um, and it, what is that, just a higher dose of whatever it is, the active ingredient is? It's a higher percentage of aluminum zirconium or an aluminum chloride, which yeah. can help block the sweating in some individuals. However, the majority of individuals with really true hyperhidrosis, which is about 3% of the population mm -hmm. actually, they exceed even those, and so they need to pursue a medical or surgical intervention. Okay, so what, ooh, surgical. Doctor, that's I mean, just thinking armpit and surgical is scaring me. Tell me what types of intervention, uh, intervention options people have to control Usually that. what we do is we kind of go up a treatment ladder. So at an initial visit, I may suggest something like a prescription deodorant like dry sol, okay. which can be applied nightly. It can burn in some instances. Other options include a pill like glycopyrrolate, which can block actually this excessive sweating, but it has side effects mm -hmm. like dry mouth, um, other side effects. And then there's other minor surgical interventions, really what we call minimally invasive like Botox, which has been shown to be very effective. So the Botox would be getting a little needle stick in the affected area how long does it last usually it'll last anywhere in the axilla particularly which is what it's FDA approved of for anywhere from six months to a year we're seeing an average okay. of about seven months in most individuals it's about 15 to 20 small pokes in each axilla it's not painless but it's really not that bad people are thrilled about two weeks to four weeks after the injections they realize they're not sweating as much they can wear their clothes they're yeah. not ashamed they're not embarrassed they can go to work without being concerned about it what about if you you know most people have problems sweating from the typical areas right. say like your underarms but what if you sweat some people sweat in weird places I right. mean you have brow sweat you right. have maybe some people sweat you know sweat right there what if you have uh, are there cases where people have excessive sweating in these other yes, areas? Yes, actually we found if you look at the research there's clusters. People who tend to have what we call focal primary hyperhidrosis cluster either into the hands, foot, axilla group, which we can all treat with Botox, mm -hmm. or they cluster into more of a groin area facial scalp sweating group. Those individuals do respond well in those other areas to either taking the pills, the glycopyrrolate, or you can now Botox in other areas as well, including the scalp and the mm -hmm. face to help them. Very interesting stuff. All right. Well, I hope this answered a lot of questions for you. And our advice is make an appointment with a board certified dermatologist, right? And get some, uh, get some treatment if needed. Thank you, doctor. You're Melissa.